Sir, mm -hmm. do you want Wells in for security? Don't bother. This one won't take long. Alright. Good afternoon, Mr. Howell. Call me Howell. Right. Mr. Howell. I have a few questions for you. Uh, you know what? I'll just skip it all. I've been here before. I know exactly what you're going to try to do. Good cop, bad cop. I've been through it all. Mm. As much as it may surprise you, Mr. Howell, I'm not worried about you. No. I'm here for somebody else. You had help early this morning, did you not? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Funny that. The way things just slip your mind sometimes. Speaking of which, you definitely should have worn gloves. Gloves? What are you, a fashion critic? How many fingers do you have? Ten. Right, that's what I assumed. So when my analytics team brought me the fingerprints I was collecting, I was a little confused. Do you know why that is? No, in fact, I don't. They brought me 11 fingerprints. Now, in my line of work, I learn new things every day. But a man with 10 fingers, leaving 11 distinct fingerprints? Well, that's extraordinary. Something tells me it's too good to be true. Who is your partner? What time is it, officer? It's 4.17 in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> well then, you're never seeing him again. He's probably on his way to Toronto by now. A few years ago, he probably could have pulled something out of your pocket, some magic tricks, some crazy scheme, but here we are. You're finished, officer. Where's your partner? Who knows? Probably in Ontario, in our new base of operations. Probably sipping a nice glass of champagne on a pile of coal. You're lying! Which road did he take? Greenway Street, officer. Of course. It's funny. I would just kill to see the look on his face right about now. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure we can arrange that. Mr. What? Hull. What are you, man? Come on. Sir? Yep. 
What happened? What did you tell him? You may know this routine, Mr. Howell, but you certainly haven't mastered it. What? No! No! Oslo! Call a correspondent in Toronto. Tell him to look for an abandoned residence on Greenway Street. I'll wager that's where these two have been stashing all of their stolen goods. I'll get to filing the rest of that report, Captain. Investigator, why don't you take the day off? You've done a week's worth of work in one day, and God knows you've earned it. I'll just have Wells file the rest of the report for you. Much appreciated, Captain. And besides, don't you have somewhere you need to be? My appointment! Good night, Captain. What would I do without you? I'd imagine you'd do whatever you wanted to. What was that, sir? Uh, nothing. It's just, that man's a gift to the city, but sometimes I wonder what he does when we're not watching him. He's a bit of a saint, and I just can't trust a man without a dark side. Dissociative personality disorder is a very serious and mostly unknown condition, Mr. Oslo. We both know there isn't a quick fix. Yes, I, I know. I'm anxious about work. What happens if... What happens when my alternate side takes the wheel and I'm on a case? I don't even know what he's like. Can you tell me again what your relapses are like? Right. I'll go to bed, finish a trying day's work, and... I don't know what happens after that. Sometimes I'll wake up half a day later wearing different clothes. Sometimes I'll find myself in alien places without any knowledge of how I got there. Alleyways, warehouses, telephone booths. <laughs> I was in the city bank broom closet one time. But I can never remember anything. Well, oftentimes, Mr. Oslo, DPD is the consequence of a faulty mental response to fear. Now, this isn't your fault, of course, just a misfiring synapse, but it could be the cause of your problem. You see, your other half, as you call him, is your mind's response to imminent danger. The person you are now is your natural state, when you are secure and in control. Neurologically, you're fearless. All your fear is handled by your other personality. He's your defense mechanism. <sighs> Doctor, I can't live with that. You know I can't. Your other self exists because of fear. Without that, he won't show up. What are you afraid of, Mr. Oslo? Let's spend the night 
around the town. Shall we? Showtime Ray. What are we here for? The boss did some careful research. He's got gold hidden up in the attic. And he's got priceless documents down in the basement. You get the gold. Hold on, what? Don't question it. He's got his fair share of quirks, but he's a bona fide genius. All right, this is ready. You ready? Ghost Pulse Hardware. Armed. Let's make this quick.
911, what's your emergency? Hello? Sir, are you there? Yeah, it's a shame. Murder gets all the coverage these days. What's going on? Please. What's your location? Hello? Hello, is anyone there? Hello? We're sending help immediately. We just got a call. A distress thing from somewhere in the suburbs. 2124 Hudson Court, what can you tell me? Oh, uh, here he is. He's 45, recently divorced, co-owner of a big bank, no criminal record, but he was the target of political assassination three years back. He was a uh, major role in deciding the senatorial election. This is big. Get out there now. Yes, sir. And call over to Casazzo. We need him on this case. Don't waste any time. Morning, Inspector. Morning, Brooke. What happened here? Uh, murder. Inspector, City Council Member David Lazare. Stabbed to death. It's uh, not a pretty sight. There. We don't know the exact time of death, but it could have been more than four hours ago. The killer left nothing we could identify him with, and Mr. Lazare died without leaving his bed. Any prints? Uh, pending. Thank you. Weapons? None found so far. Medical analysis shows four-inch blade. And what do we have for a motive? Uh, we suspect political. Uh, his death would have opened a vacancy on the council. He's a prominent deciding member, uh, opposition candidate. Of course. How exactly did he die? The multiple puncture wounds to the chest would have done it, but there are more lacerations there than would have been necessary. So this was done in the rush? It's rather atypical for an assassin, don't you think? I wouldn't know, Inspector. Fair enough. Who called 911? Uh, he had a panic button, sir. On this side of the room? He couldn't have possibly gotten to that, much less while being attacked. Besides, it wouldn't have worked for him anyway. The power's out. We don't know when that happened. Well, that just proves the point. If we did know, it would mean that some natural event blocked the lines, or a killer simply cut the power before committing his crime. What this means is that he was smart. Smart enough to both shut off the power and send a false positive to us. Brilliant piece of work, actually. That hardly makes any sense. How did we get the call? How did, how did he send it? Right. Well, the call had to have come from a phone, a landline. That's why we could trace it so fast. Mr. Lazier couldn't have gotten to his landline because he died. How do you account for that? What if the killer was the one who called 911? But that's the only answer. That has to be it, which means he wanted us to find his crime, just not him. This wasn't a murder. So, what are you talking it, about? Well, it was a murder, but it wasn't meant to be. I need to check something. If they were killing the power, they had to have been worried about alarms. Just as I thought, lead paint. In order to install an alarm system, Mr. Lazier would have had to remove his door frame and replace it once the alarm was installed. Repainted as well. But lead paint was banned before police trigger alarms were even invented. So the alarm wasn't connected to the door, exactly. then, then why would the culprit go through so much trouble to kill the power? Wells, search the house for alarms. I have a feeling cutting the power might have been overkill. You searched the safe upstairs, right? Yes, sir. Come with me. Yeah. Bolts have been cut. Something high power and... Whew. Chilled it with liquid nitrogen first. Smart. Everything seems to be here. If I'm right. So this is why our friend was being so careful. If I didn't know better, I'd say he didn't steal anything. It was his intention, I'm sure. 
Here. In this room. He had done his work. He had whatever he was trying to steal in his hands. So why did Mr. Lazier die? There's no motive here, uh, Inspector. The killer had a clear exit. He had what he came for. A killing would only draw attention. Why would he murder someone just to cover up a simple robbery? But that's just it. Attention. He murdered Mr. Lazier to draw attention away from his deftly hidden robbery. It fits perfectly and makes it seem like nothing was ever stolen. Uh, that's absurd. Do you honestly believe someone would murder someone just to cover up a robbery? Do those wounds tell a story of an assassination, of an attempted murder? Why would the killer cut the power if there were no alarms in the doors? That's what he was worried about. Why would he call the cops on himself? True. But so we'd give him news coverage. If we'd shown up a week too late to a cold corpse and no leads, no one would ever put that on the news. This, this makes his plan airtight, foolproof. It makes the press happy. Every step of his plan is orchestrated to hide his robbery and show off his murder. And it almost worked. He was smart. He just wasn't smart enough. Very impressive, Inspector. Captain. Another masterpiece of reason for you to sign your name on. But this one seems too good to be true. You see, when I first found our friend over there, I just thought this was an open and shut case of political assassination. But this morning, I found an anonymous message in the police database. And it was from someone with investigator credentials. They probably want to keep their name and badge out of all of this. And it's about you, Oslo. What is this? To whom to be concerned, I am what someone call an actor. <laughs> now, many people misunderstand actors. They think that we're liars. No, no, we are the only ones who tell the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. It's the perfect people you have to watch out for. Which brings me to my point. Leviticus Oslo is a fraud. You people really thought he was a hero. That he genuinely could save you from hell and high water. Talk about an easy audience. You're probably giving your favorite inspector chocolate and roses while the man he couldn't save gets colder on the bed right next to him. You might be wondering why your golden boy couldn't crack this one. And I'll tell you, it's because he didn't set it up. Before now, he's held all the cards on every case, controlled everything. But now, I run this city. Oslo's act is over, mine has begun. It's time for the world to see who Inspector Oslo really is. When he's not in control of the stage. As crazy as he is, he does drive a convincing point. Captain, you cannot possibly tell me you believe what this psych ward escapee is telling you. This crime could not have been prevented, but we have numerous leads. The case isn't over by a long shot, and I have no intention of giving it up. Who is this maniac anyway? Why do you think I would have thinking... believed you this morning when I first found him, but. Officer, why don't you just show him? These are the fingerprints from the door handle, the cell phone, the silverware, and even the safe. And these are your fingerprints, Oslo. As you can see, it's a lot easier to understand how you know the ins and outs of this case. Now, we can't come to any certain conclusions, but... Uh... Your fingerprints are all over this case. Hand over your badge. Sir, that's absurd. Investigator... Be glad I'm not arresting you immediately. You're dismissed of all duties, effective immediately. Fine. You did what you had to, sir.
visit and inspection. All right, all right, yeah. Calm down, it's just you and me. Before you go, I have a little favor to ask of you. What do you want? Just keep your voice down. Fair enough. I'd like you to bring in my partner. I hate to inform you, but I already did. No, no, no. There was another. Another mask wearing nut job like the rest of us. You see, he gave us this job, told us where to go, what to do. But in the end, he took what he wanted and called the cops on us. Double crossed us, took our money, just like that. What well, can you tell me about him? Nothing much. Except that he's got this perception of the world about who's real and who are just actors. He's acting out high and mighty upon those who he believes are just Faking. They call him the Thespia. Thank you. My pleasure. Freeze! Hands in the air! You're trespassing on SSIU property. The captain has issued a warrant for your arrest and incapacitation by any means necessary. Well, as we both know that's absurd. How about this? When I solve this case, I'll get you promoted. I know you've always wanted that. Just put down the gun, please. Let's be rational. I guess you're not that quick. I'm taking your job, old man. It's a shame your career had to end on such a low note. Brooke! What are you doing here? The best detective this city's ever seen, Inspector. It's a distinct pleasure to do you a favor. But it doesn't matter, you trip the alarm, you've got five minutes. Just lose your case and you might need this. Thank you. I won't forget this. I won't either, Inspector. You owe me one. Identified fingerprint set. What? I haven't been to any of these places. Robert H. Dennard. Who are you? Best known for his work on the Ghost Pulse hardware. Cyber warfare device designed to prevent all communication between the host device and outside networks without a trace. It explains why Mr. Lazier didn't have his alarms go off. What is the ghost of all hardware? Where is this on my computer? These are all on my computer. Robbery, 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 robbery. The General Electric robbery. It's the same as here. Metro gun retail robbery. Robert H. Dennard estate robbery. There is Mr. Lazier. What are you? Strauss 
Nazir. Bank robbery. It's impossible. The place hasn't been robbed in ages. Floor plan. Admin codes. Hello, Leviticus. I hope you visit me with good news. I think I've figured out who my other personality is. Well, that's incredible news! What are you here to ask me about? He's not exactly someone I'd like to be. And he's done a fair bit of harm to me and a few others. I see. This is, at best, a gray area in my field, but if I had to recommend a course of action, this would be my advice. Your brain is hardwired to control you. In your case, it chooses to give you a different personality when crisis threatens you, and this is the root of your problem. Now keep in mind, Mr. Oslo, this technique is highly experimental. Oh, just, please, tell me what I have to do. I propose that you go through with an action that your second self regularly does, to your knowledge, okay. as yourself. Now, this would require a great deal of knowledge of his regular mannerisms, and if your brain perceives any sort of threat, you could switch personalities anyway. You could be discovered, overwhelmed, or even injured, depending on the severity of the mental response and the nature of the task you'll be performing. From what you've told me, this sounds like a dangerous person to try and imitate. I'm not sure I can recommend this to you, Leviticus. I appreciate your concern, but the alternative is much worse. I have to go. You still owe me for that full hour, though. Good, good afternoon, good afternoon. Good. You have a whole lot of explaining to do. Yes, sir. Why don't you just show up and tell me why one of my officers is tranquilized on a police station floor? Yes, sir, of course. Wells and I were in the office late with the evidence from the Lazare case this morning. I fell asleep and woke up a few hours later to voices coming from this hallway here sounded like Inspector Oslo talking to Wells. All right. With all due respect, sir, I don't think Detective Oslo murdered David Lazare. I think he was framed and I think Wells was in on it. I I saw him grab his gun from where he usually keeps it on his desk and he wasn't gonna do that if he wasn't gonna use it. And well, I took my tranquilizer and knocked him out. Do I need to remind you that armed assault of an officer is not part of your job description? No. Sir, it's not, but based on the way Wells was acting, I think I made the right call. You think he was framed? Yes, sir, I'm sure of it, and I know Oslo's working on a way to prove his innocence. We just, just need to give him some time. Brooke, you better be right about this. Thank you. 
know, boss. Me and Ray were wondering something. How'd the cops get to the job site last night? We didn't wake anyone, we didn't trip any alarms. Yeah, we were still this close to spending a solid 15 years eating meals off prison trays together. We didn't know anything about that. Would you? Well, gentlemen, the law enforcement personnel of this area are hardly qualified. Listen, no more games from you tonight. We'll get in, we do your job, we'll get out. And the entire time, I'll have a loaded 45 pointed at your back, just to make sure that you're taking things seriously. You got it? So what's your plan? Take this, attach it to the mainframe, and press the black button. It'll kill the power and send a false positive, so nobody knows we're here. Is the router down yet? I don't know, your machine is on. Mm. Well, that would mean yes. This had better work. Please question the investigation. Keep your hands up, walk away. It's just me. Inspector Oslo! I, I can't believe you actually done it! This is the most incredible inside job I've ever heard of! Good to see you too, Captain. I don't think we'll ever be able to fully understand your line of work, Oslo. But I'm glad to have you back. Yeah, Captain.
at all. I mean, it looks like you still have some questions to answer. I don't know. Yeah, Inspector, oh, question, question number three. Question number three. Question, question, please. Yes. The real thespian is still at large. What will be your next steps to stop this new wave of crime? Uh, well, Detective Brooke and I are... Working on it. Next question. Yeah, what can you tell us about the criminal behind these occurrences? 